What up, Buffet 2? Hi, I'm John Baloi. Hi, this is Harmonix. Hi, guys, this is Toby. We are listening to B-Roll. 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 With Cyril Zuma. I'm sure everyone knows him now. One of my very good friends, Rich Misi. Oh, yes. You were studying um, fashion and photography at Lysoff at the time. And he owned a DSLR and I was like in awe of how beautiful this thing looked. And it was the first time I had seen it because I always used to shoot with like digital cameras and point and shoot all of those kind of small cam- cameras. I um, always made it work though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always worked out. Um, so I would, um, I eventually started borrowing his camera to shoot people and then went, which started making like an extra income for me. Um, where I wouldn't need to ask my mother for money anymore. I, I was gifted with telling um, African stories with just still images. Welcome back to b My name is Cyril Zuma. And you are tuned to another episode of b You know on b I bring amazing guests. Guests that have been doing incredible work in their industries. And today is no exception at all. I am sitting across an amazing gentleman who I've had the, had the pleasure of getting to know via social media. I've also had the pleasure of getting to know him. Today is the first time I meet you. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, it's the first time I'm meeting you actually. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. So I think the power of social media is what definitely got you and I here. Yep. Please can you introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are? My name is Andy C. Weboya. I am a Johannesburg-based photographer, born and raised in the Eastern Cape. Um, but yeah, we've all landed here because of work. <laughs> Apart from being an amazing photographer, what else are you? Are you a brother, a sister? I'm a, I'm a brother to two annoying sisters. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I wish I was born alone, but I'm, uh, I, I'm a brother. I am a friend. I am a colleague to some people. And yeah, cool. overall, just wholesome gent. I love, I, love, I, love, I love the way you say that. <laughs> so what do you enjoy when you don't have a camera? In your hand, what do you enjoy doing? Listening to music. Um, most of my time is spent listening to music um, and just unwinding and trying to enjoy whatever moment I have to myself. Yeah. And can you plug us on any songs that we should be listening to right now? Um, I'm going to just drop a few albums that you should be listening to um, that have enjoyed um, this, from this year so far. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Um, Sipio Dana Bamako, and the new favorite is Lara Mavuso's um, self titled album. He just released yeah. that album, yeah? Yeah, it's about okay, two cool. so I think um, I'm definitely going to play, be playing the Langa Mavuso album. I've heard so much about it, and I'm glad somebody else is recommending it. The last person who recommended it to me only knew one song from the album, <laughs> and then I said, you know what, I'm not going to take this from here. So you've got a lot of albums that. You've mentioned a lot of albums that um, sound, have a similar sound to one another. Yeah. I noticed that they're very much African. Yeah. Um, I also get the same thing about your work. You shoot a lot of African. You want to tell African stories. Yeah. Is it an obsession that you have that you want to be able to tell African stories or is it just something that you enjoy doing? Um, I would say actually that it is a... I, some people are talented um, and I would say it's a gift. Um, I, I was gifted with telling um, African stories with just still images. And maybe I am very rooted in my Africanness in more ways than I, um, I, I know, because now you also just made me realize that most of the music that I listen to is African. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, 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 it's something that chose me. I didn't choose it. <laughs> so how did you get in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the photography industry? We spoke about it a bit off there. Yeah. And I just want everybody else to know how you got into the industry. You know, the story of you living in, in Pretoria and all of this happening in your life and now you being an amazing photographer, how did it happen? Yeah, so like I told you earlier, I was born in Tata. Um, grew up in East London for most of my childhood years. And I wanted to leave, we all leave Eastern Cape because there aren't many universities and um, colleges and stuff that side. So um, I left going to Pretoria to study um, IT because I, I wasn't really... Um, I didn't know much about what was going on in many career spaces because um, back home you all go to study either PR or HR or you do teaching or you 
if you're one of the smart ones, you're probably going to do accounting and stuff. Sure. Um, for me, it was a, I knew I just wanted to do IT. Um, and when I chose the type of IT that I was doing, it was multimedia because I also knew that there was a very um, creative, like a creative stuck inside of me. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I wanted to do photography at that time. Yeah. I was 17 when I matriculated, I think. Wow. And um, I had already even gotten application forms for Nelson Mandela University, which was the only university that offered um, photography at that time. Is this just in um, Eastern Cape or just from what you've known? I was looking closer to home first before I looked outside um, in everywhere else. For sure. Um, but besides the colleges, I, I was just st stacking, sticking to university because you all, we all knew that you needed to get like your NS fast and yeah. this and that. And with colleges, it was kind of difficult to get any funding. You sure. Know? Um, so I went and studied IT and multimedia. Um, it was mostly um, programming, honestly. The, crea <laughs> the creative was always just 20% of the exam okay. um, and the um, programming was 80% um, of the exam. So um, I, I was always just drawn to the creative tasks and knowing that I'm going to nail that 20% because I wasn't really into IT. I didn't feel like I belonged in any class that I stepped into. Um, and eventually I started um, borrowing cameras from campus and I would go and like shoot um, my own stuff when um, I, I had free time. Sure. And I'm sure everyone knows him now. One of my very good friends, Rich Misi. Oh, yes. You were studying um, fashion and photography at Lysoff at the time. And he owned a DSLR and I was like in awe of how beautiful this thing looked. And it was the first time I had seen it because I always used to shoot with like digital cameras and point and shoot all of those kind of small cam cameras. I um, always made it work though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always worked out. Um, so I would, um, I eventually started borrowing his camera to shoot people and then went, which started making like an extra income for me um, where I wouldn't need to ask my mother for money anymore. Is this you um, still studying at the same time? I'm still studying at the same time. Um, and then eventually through social media, like you were saying, um, I was um, grateful to, I don't know how I actually, how this came about because I'm not a person that is, is, I'm a very shy and reserved person. I'm very to myself and stuff. But something told me to um, DM, you remember Liquid Chefs, um, Rosebank, very nice, vibey place. Um, the manager at the time, J Cubes, I DM'd him and I was like, I'd like to shoot an event for you. Sure. Um, and I went in once for one weekend. It was a sold out Sunday um, event um, that he was doing. And it was a very nice, cool, young, vib vibrant, um, chilled out space. And um, I shot once and he was happy with the work and I eventually just started shooting there every weekend and that's where I hit it off, basically. Wow, what a story. So you basically left home going to study IT, but <laughs> you ended up finding some creative work in there. Do you think that little bit of IT or that 80% helped in the creative 20%? It, it, it helps in many aspects of my life, actually. Sure. Um, you, you still remember the basics of what you were taught back then, um, um, you know how to apply it to your like life, um, like on your everyday life. Yeah. Um, and like recently actually, I wanted to have my digital portfolio made. So there was a guy that did an illustration for me, um, I think a year or two ago. So I was like, I'm gonna give him the job. He's my home brother, he's from the Eastern Cape. Like, let me trust you with this job. You know? sure. I want a digital website for my, like as a portfolio. Um, and then the guy, long story short, just went missing, disappeared like, sure. into thin air. And the website was almost done, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be. Um, yeah. He hadn't really encapsulated my vision and, um, and, and brought it out. So I had to rework it myself with the knowledge that I took from, from, from university. I changed all the images that he had, um, they, were, they had pixelated and everything was just bad. And, yeah. So it's good to know that the 80% was helping it was, you, <laughs> you were attracted to, you know, to the other part of things. I, I get that you know, you, uh, a few things inspire you and you mentioned music is one of them that inspires you. What else inspires you? Um, I think the biggest inspiration of my life is um, wanting comfort. Um, I've never been, I've never grown up in a space where you could be too comfortable. Um, and I know that I want that for myself. I know that eventually the goal for me is to be very comfortable. I want to live that kind of life. And that's what makes me get up every day and want to still um, carry on. So on days that you're not inspired at all, like, you know, 
to create anything uh, around you. How do you deal with those emotions? Because it's not it, not every day that you're going to get inspired. Not yeah. every single day you're going to have that amazing idea. But on the days that you're not inspired to do something, what do you do? Just whether it's to clear your mind or to inspire yourself. Um, the younger me would like I would kick myself in the foot and make it feel like. Um, um, maybe I've reached my creative peak and why is it that I'm trying to work so hard on something and it's not coming together. But um, the, the, the me right now, the grown up and more experienced and not as naive me, um, knows to just allow myself to feel. Like I know that when I, am, when I wake up and things are just not aligned and I know that even if I am doing or working towards something, it's not going to be to my best. Um, I allow myself to, to, to feel that you're human and these days are always going to happen. You're not always going to wake up on um, a high um, and just be patient with yourself and like find a way that makes you feel better about yourself and then maybe that can pick you up and yeah. I like that because looking at your images now that are going to be on show, I get a sense of the feel. So I've been to Stone Town before. Yeah. And I remember it was in, you know, I think I had, I was one year in the photography industry. I wasn't as experienced, but looking at your photos, it took me right there. I could feel back there. I remember just walking out towards the beach and I could see, the, you know, this festival going on there. I could feel the whole vibe of the people, the kids. Can you tell us about this project that you're currently working on right now, actually? So, Stone Town, which is my debut artworks collection, um, is... A set of images, um, I'd say the first um, photo set that I actually have made as a serious photographer. I've always um, been very self-conscious and feeling like, oh, will people really accept this and is it... And then I, until I got to a point where I made it about myself. But it was images that I shot um, almost two years ago, I think, um, when I was, on, I was working for another company in Cape Town, which um, does adventure motorbike tours for mostly European clients. Um, and I was on that journey with them. We would shoot everywhere um, up until Tanzania and Kenya. Um, and we, we would always be on the road traveling. I also used to have a motorbike. And I would also be like just, just so immersed in every experience. And what happened was we were working on something else um, and on touring with um, clients. And it just happened that I made that um, body of work without even really I, I wasn't telling myself that my aim is to make a, like a, a collection of images from this place. I was just really doing what I enjoy doing. Sure. Until I sat back when I got home and I opened Lightroom and I was like, okay, this is incredible. This is worthy. Image. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is worthy. Um, and I, since then, like I said, it's almost been two years, if not two. Um, it was actually two years last month um, and I decided for the two-year anniversary to release it as a body of images because I've grown so much from the photography that I was and I'd, I'd say it was the place that inspired me to do documentary photography the most. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to the place. I'll always keep going back to Stone Town. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm also with you. I, yeah. I cannot <laughs> wait to go back to Stone Town. It is one of those locations that just Somehow it feels like I'm in South Africa. It's like, like the whole vibe is amazing, it, but with the beach. I, I, I would always wake up and feel like I'm in a movie set. Sure. Like it's like I was just like dragged into a movie set. It looks unreal. It yeah, it, 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 definitely, it definitely does. Now, you're telling us that you've got a body of artwork that's coming out or that is out right yeah. now. And I am interested in your photography. How do I get a piece of your, of your art hanging on my wall? Okay, so you can go over to my website, which is andisiwebwire.com, and on the prints page, you'll see the catalog of images that are available. Um, they're all limited edition images, and um, only 15 of each are printed. Um, and they all come framed in acid-free materials, which um, basically makes the um, artworks like archival standard. They are going to live forever. <laughs> So I've never done a, um, a framing of my photos to that large scale. Yeah. And I'm a new photographer, or just a creative, or somebody wanting to frame my photos. Uh, what's the process that you took to get your, your photos framed? Because, you know, I don't even know where to go first. Yeah. So for me, it was the hardest part of it at that time was um, because we had just get, gotten into level five lockdown, um, I was battling with, you know, how we all of us basically were 
um, not as busy as we were. There was a lot of free time and I was like, I knew that I wanted something to come out of this period. Sure. Um, and my biggest, um, um, the, 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 the only problem that I encountered while like trying to make artworks was what would they look like? What was the end product, product going to look like? What materials was I going to use? Um, what paper are they going to be printed on? So I think you just basically need to find what you want, the final product you want to achieve um, and, and shop around for a place that can um, give you that final finish, like the best final finish that you're looking for. I definitely need to do some research on that. I am going to come to you because, you know, <laughs> I definitely want to have a serial zoomer hanging in somebody's gallery, yeah. somebody's shop, somebody's home. Um, it's something that we all aspire to as creatives to see your work hung up by somebody, somebody appreciating it bigger than just likes or retweets. Uh, so big ups to you on that one. And I know that it is going to be amazing. I'm definitely getting a piece. We've already spoken about yep. this. Uh, I don't know which one it is. Well, I've chosen one that I want. But I'm in between two. There is one um, of those two kids riding a bike. Yeah. And then the other one that I'm really in between is like, there's a, there's a kid. Is no, it? so that one is also the okay. okay. number three. Okay. But it's that, I think it's that of uh, there's a kid, man. He's wearing a he's wearing a hat and he sort of looks back and oh, yeah, shot yeah, us yeah, over yeah. his shoulders yeah. type of. Yep. Powerful. So I I'm, I'm in between those, but I don't know which one I want to get. Yeah. Um, so there's those, and then you also can, um, which are open edition. The rest of the images that are under stories on my um, digital portfolio. Uh, yeah, I I available those for people who just want like an artwork of those me, but I mean, my, my main focus right now is stone time because that's my favorite body of work. I love it. So how do you balance just being a top creative? How do I balance? Yeah, how do you balance being a top creative and being an amazing brother and also being an amazing son? You know, all those things that life has to throw at us. How do you balance it and still ma manage to be a top creative? I'm gonna be very honest. I'm, I'm a very selfish person with my time, and um, especially with, with, with on, on days where I feel like something is off, and I wake up and I'm not 100. I'm a very selfish person because I don't like giving people 80 or 90 person percent of me. Like I, I like give, giving my all to any person that um, happens to be in my presence. So um, the balance would be on great days, which is most days where I'm just happy. Um, I'm always present and having conversations with people, um, checking up on my friends, chilling, hanging out, going out for drinks, whatever. And then on days where I feel like I have hit a brick wall, I just like being alone. I, I, I don't want to be in anyone's company. And you're probably listening to your music. Yep, it's just me and my music. Hi, my name is Andesiwa Boya and you are listening to B-Roll with Cyril Zuma. Welcome back to B-Roll. I am still chatting to Andesiwa Boya. And we have gotten a lot of information from him from you know, how we started out in photography, how we got in the industry and moving to Johannesburg, going to Stone Town, shooting a whole collection in Stone Town. Can you tell us a little bit more about Stone Town and the project itself? Because you know, um, I want to buy some artwork I know that earlier on we spoke about people can go to your website. Yeah. I believe I think I think there's just more to the to the artwork. Can you tell us a little bit more? So Stone Town was basically just um, like my day to day day to day um, documenting of the place um, that part of Zanzibar. Um, it, it 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 was very in the moment type like type of images whereby I was like I said working on something else so it, I, I had to sort of like steal the time to do my own stuff on the side. For those who want to see the images please go to the YouTube channel Cyril Zuma and you will definitely find the episode there too. Okay so um, there's this image it's called I titled it Polyfestilin um, of this guy basically hanging out like hanging by the window. Um, please can you show us to us on the camera here I actually like that. Ooh, okay, cool. Please can you explain this to us? So, like I was saying before, when I was saying I wish I could actually like see the images so I can talk you through them, is it was very um, in the moment kind of shots. It wasn't any, like none of them were planned um, prior. Um, I didn't even notice that I had shot some of these until I sat down in Lightroom and looked through them. Um, there's also this one called Make Way. 
um, of two girls riding a bicycle um, in an alleyway. Um, this, it was the vibrant colors of the images for me that just like popped out and made this image what it is. And, and also like what I was saying earlier about like, these are moments that you, 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 you actually notice while you're at, in the moment, but sure. to be able to have an eye to capture this moment at that time, it's, 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 it's the beauty of like making these kind of images for me. For sure, I remember this image very well because yeah. uh, that, was, that was one of the favorite images, but it wasn't, didn't make it to the top three. Only because I remember those small car corridors, you know, everywhere you go, yeah. you have to go yeah. through some small corridor yeah. to get somewhere. And you, you know, you wonder, how did I get to a place like this? And it's just amazing. Everything looks almost the same, but it's <laughs> different. Yeah. yeah, I remember getting into a club, I thought it was a house. <laughs> and we get in there, it's packed to yeah. the rafters, and it's got a balcony like a house, everything. Mm. But we had to go through some alleyways, and I really loved that photo again on its own too. So do you have any more photos? I'm sure you do, actually. Yep, um, I have some store photo stories that I have on my online portfolio. Um, one of them I shot at um, Moshi in Tanzania as well, um, which is like j just by the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. So I had traveled there the previous year and we were also on um, a, an, uh, like another work trip that I had to just... Um, we, we took a, um, a stop by some primary school um, while we were leaving and heading back to the airport. And um, I just saw these kids coming and running towards us as we, came, we got to the place and I was like, I need to get my camera, I yeah. need to get my camera. And I wasn't even sure, it was such an in the moment thing that I wasn't even sure if I had the right settings. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just going to capture this as it is and sure. then I'll see later. And yeah, to my surprise, the images came out looking good. I also have another photo story called Look, Views from Lookout Hill mm -hmm. that I shot in Cape Town. Um, Lookout Hill is um, the tallest hill um, in the Cape Flats okay. where you can basically see a lot of like the Cape Flats which is your Kailicha and like all those big places in Cape Town. So it basically like um, is a story that I would say is a telescopic view from look out, look out hill into the streets of Cape Town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, there's another one that I am working on doing before this I was actually working on having it done by now, but now I might have to postpone it to next year, which um, is something that I wanted to travel to Accra and Ghana for. Um, it's a place that has like served as a great inspiration to my creative career, and I think if I would find myself there, like it would literally heighten up my work, and so, I, would, I would so bring stunning images from there. <laughs> the plan is to get you to Accra. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys are hearing this, please can we get Andy Siva to Accra because please, guys. <laughs> looking at the images I am looking at here from Stone Town, those are amazing. What other projects are you working on or what can we look forward to from you in the next coming months, weeks and years? Um, so what I was just talking about now, um, the project that I want to go into in Accra, um, I can't really say when that will be done, but sure. um, I, 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 I'm one of those people that always like, I'll, I'll shoot something and then I'll sit with it and then I'll know when it's ready for me to share it with people. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I'm not gonna like say when it's gonna be done, but when I, I, I'm done with this phase of my creative career, I'm sure it'll be ready for everyone to see. Um, and then besides that, there's a lot of other commercial work that I'll be doing in, um, next month because things are getting back to normal and that's where I get most of my bread from. Like sure. Your um, corporate gigs and yeah. Okay, and how can we get a hold of you if you want to book you, whether it's events, whether it is a corporate gig, as you say, how can we get a hold of you? So my email address is info at andesiweboya.com, info at andesiweboya.com, and you can also find me on my Twitter and um, Instagram, andesiwe underscore boya on Twitter, andesiwe.boya on Instagram, um, and then just hit me up, and yeah, that's, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Or you can find my cell phone, cell phone number. <laughs> I don't know if I should share it or not. <laughs> we definitely not sharing any cell phone numbers. Yeah. We know how this yeah, can yeah. be. I mean, email is sufficient. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For anybody who wants to do business, please get to make sure that you get a hold of Andy Seaway. He is a top photographer, an amazing photographer. As again, as I said, guys, I bring amazing people to the podcast and well now I think we can call it a podcast and this yeah, yeah you, you are the yeah. you are the first guest on this. <laughs> so for those of us remember. You've been in the industry for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. What do you think it takes to be at the top of your game? Um I think what it takes is just knowing yourself. 
more than anything. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that might make you feel like you're less than or you're not worthy of some jobs and stuff. Um, and I mean, as, as much as there's a lot of support in the industry, there's also a lot of negativity, um, especially based on who's booked for what and what did they produce for this brand and this and that. Um, that is going to stick in your mind and it's going to make you feel like nothing is worth it for you and all sure. of that. I think what, 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 what keeps you at the top and like just you feel safe there is, is knowing that I, I'm good. I've, I've done the stuff that I've done because I was worth it. I was, I was picked up among, uh, among a lot of people to do certain jobs because I, 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 I'm, I'm good, you know. So just know and be sure of yourself and what you're doing and not, no one can take that from you. No, nobody at all. I think, you know, in the creative industry, again, we can get a, um, get bogged up in the likes and the retweets and, yep. you know, who's getting booked for what. But sometimes you're right, you have yeah. to reflect and sit back and be like, you know, I'm actually really good. Yeah. Somebody paid money out of their pocket. Yeah. You know, whether it was 950 or whether it was a million, 100,000, but they took money out of their pocket to pay me for services they believed I was good at. So I really yeah. enjoy those words. And, and a lot of people just think the social media validation is what makes you great. Um, it helps you put put you out there and your work out there, but um, it, it, it doesn't take away from like who you are. I, I, I feel like a lot of people just feel like if a post didn't do what it was supposed to do or what they thought it would do, then um, maybe the image isn't as nice as it sh should be and whatever. Um, um, for me, it's like I was telling you just now how I just deleted my social media accounts and I started again. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were wondering, like, why are you deleting an account with 13,000 whatever followers and how, what about your work? How, I was like, the people that know my work and like consuming work, my work are going to find me. Sure. They're definitely going to know. They where follow you either yeah. way. And yeah, literally just now, I think I've had that account for two months and it's already on a thousand followers, you know. Um, and engagement is still the same and all of sure. those kind of things. And I always say to people that just because people aren't engaging with the post does not mean that they can't see it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's another true. thing. Yeah. So I think I've heard, I heard that um, Twitter and Instagram, or just most mm. sites now, the way they monitor you is no longer about likes yeah. or about retweets. But now they want to see, you know, if you scroll on Instagram. If you tap. And, and that person, and if you tap, does that person, like, you know, that's the attention. They want yeah. their attention. So now... Likes and retweets are not really the currency anymore. But people, yeah. people do scroll, and most of the time, people are too lazy to hit a double tap, you know. But they definitely love the work. Some of them save it and they forget to like it. Yeah, I always say, make it for the person that might see one image of yours that they might think this guy is great, and then might see might want to see the rest. Then when they land up on your media. They'll be like, oh, where has this guy been this whole time? You sure. know? And not for the people that see your work every day. Sure. You know? And it's normally the people that see your work every day that are not liking it. They're not going to book you. <laughs> no, they're, they're, also, they're not going exactly. to book you. The real people that are going to book you are probably the ones in the likes, yep. in the comments and so forth. I remember Austin saying to me, you know, shoot um, for the clients you want. And same thing as you do, you know, post for the clients that you're trying to get and not yeah. for the masses that are not going to book you. Yeah. Because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if they're not going to book you or suggest you. Yeah, I I always used to struggle with that as well, with not, um, with 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 trying to be or brand myself as a documentary photographer, um, whereby I felt like I was just posting images that no one understood. A few people did, and they really were like, "Oh, this is stunning! This is so great! Where did you? I want to know more about it and all of that." I still sit with a lot of work that is very like portrait and your I've shot like weddings for my family and stuff yeah. like that kind of stuff that that, that that looks great and it deserves to be shared yeah. but then it just does not align with who I'm trying to um, like attract for sure you know so um, and a lot of people love it when I post the portraits of people and this and the celebrities um, and then you post a documentary post and people are just like what the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I had to sit with that a lot and I, like I had to teach myself and realize that it's not because it's not that they're not engaging because you posted a bad image they just don't get it yeah. they prefer it when you post the people and that's what they're used to and that's sure. okay but don't stop doing what you're doing sure. because people are just not willing to engage with it that's and I mean, till today, I still get booked for all sorts of gigs, even though I only share 
like that specific kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think, you know, touching on to those points, it is very important to post for what the heart feels good and, and ideally what you want to get booked for. Yeah. Uh, because you know documentary work is the work number one it lives longer mm -hmm. it pays more you know there's more credibility in it other than and there's more you can do with it yeah there's more you can do with it. and i think you know I, I, I always watch like watching a tv show i always look at a storyline yeah what is the storyline even in anything if somebody's in front of a camera or talking to me there's a storyline behind yeah. it and it you know the, the the pieces of work that have got a story behind it Platon number one. Platon shoots amazing work, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's without a doubt. What's so amazing is the stories behind yep. each portrait. And I think that's what captures everybody. You can see a photo of Mugabe, Donald Trump, or wherever you want to see, but if you don't understand the story behind it, yep. ooh, you can get lost. Before I let you go, what advice do you have for anybody wanting to start out in photography? And just any uh, thoughts that you want to share with us? Um, I, I, I would say take your time, be patient with yourself, um, find what type of photography you like doing and enjoy doing the most and then just nurture that, like your skills around that. Um, there's no such thing in, like as an overnight success, like overnight successes take, what did Bonang say, I think 10 years yeah. to, to, to make, um, we've been at this for what, close to a decade yeah. now and still we're still at that point where everything is starting to gain momentum. Um, it won't be something that's going to happen overnight. Yeah. You won't, you might get all the likes and the followers, but maybe not the, the, the bookings and whatever. Sure. But that means just keep looking around for where can I better myself? Um, what do I need to do more of? And um, don't give up. Don't give up. I, I always say it's like with, with, with life in general, the only time where your life becomes meaningless is when you give up. As, as long as you wake up every day and you still are hungry for something, you stand a chance, a good chance of getting it. Hmm. Definitely wise words. Thank you so much, Andy Siria, for coming to the podcast or the podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure. I do feel like I know you a bit better. I do feel like the relationship has become better between the two of us. And I do hope that you guys got to know him a little bit better, the amazing photographer. Please go check out the project. It's called Stone Town. Please do visit the website. Please also check him out on social media, Twitter and Instagram. And then your website is www.andesiweboya.co.za. .com. .com. So www.andesiweboya.com. Please go check him out. Thank you for coming to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Cheers.